looked like me. So what am I going to do about that? I'm going to make him look like me. So for hundreds of years, we've been telling you, and now you have to keep in mind that we took away any other God that you might have through force, through fear, through pain, through uh, uh, any means necessary. So now I'm going to give you a God, but I'm going to do that in a way that is going to further me. So I'm going to give you a God that looks like me so that when you bow down to that God, you're bound down to me. Because the reality is, and see, this is something that that bothered me when I left the church out of um, frustration because I, wa I wasn't hearing these things. Because the Bible tells us what Jesus looked like when he walked here. The Bible tells us what he's going to look like when he comes back. We have taken that and changed it. My, um, one of my grandchildren, when he was about eight years old, I have a black nativity in my home uh, that I put out at Christmas. And he had been there several times and all of a sudden one day he brings me the baby Jesus and he says mama this is not right and I said what's not right he said this is not right mama now this is a child that every time he's with me he gets lessons in this my son says to the point to where he has to deprogram them when he gets them back home. This child knows where my heart is. This child, but he's, this is not right, Mama. What's wrong? Tell me. Jesus wasn't black. Jesus was white. Who told you that? And then we have this great conversation. I tell them, it's not something you have to go back and fight. You don't have to go, because I don't want them beaten down until they're strong enough to know for what they believe, you know. But I want them to know the truth. I said, in your mind, in your heart, no. Do you remember when Jesus went to Egypt? He hid in Egypt. The people in Egypt, honey, they're, they're not white people. How could he hide that? See, so that we've done that. We've given your people a God that looks like me so that you don't have any qualm about bowing down to me see because this is the image of God I don't know of any sin that we've committed that's greater than that one and we did it with the Bible in our hands when we were beating your ancestors for looking at us eye to eye and we're quoting to them from this scripture. Even if, if we allowed them to have their own ministers, which there wasn't many of because we didn't allow them to read. But if we said, okay, you can have your church. This is my plantation. I'm going to do what I want with it. You can have your church. But then spies were sent and those spies would stand outside the church and that man would be beaten, perhaps killed, if he preached anything other than three sermons. And those three sermons were turn the other cheek, obey your master, and it's going to get better one of these days. God's going to take care of all of it. You're going to be in a happy, happy land. So put up with what you're putting up with now 
and we made your people preach that to your people and it's still being done it's still being done those are the sermons that your people hear those sermons are what causes your people to comfort me when I do something that's wrong we've taken Christianity in the same way the clan has taken Christianity